Hey folks, how's it going? Rush here, and welcome back to another uh, King of the Hill, I guess. It's been a while since we've had one of these here on the channel. We finally made time to get one together here, and especially since the casting conflict season has sort of ended for now. Uh, we're getting back in the swing of producing some more uh, casual-based content, and this one, of course, uh, is an old favorite, the King of the Hill format. Of course, if you're unfamiliar with it, uh, three players going up against another three players in a team-based format. Uh, players from each team go up against each other, and in sort of like an elimination style, best of one, uh, the team that gets you know that loses all their players first will lose and you know so on and so forth uh and with these we of course bring in some different formats to try and excite things and i think for this one in order to get back into the swing of things we did a bit of a popper format we did more of a casual popper format for this in case again you're unaware uh popper decks are decks that usually focus around commons only. They don't go above the rare slot. Um, so for this one, we decided that the common and basic level cards would be uh, the only cards allowed in. With the exception of Armory and Blacksmith, of course, those being, I believe, basic cards um, anyway. But we figured uh, we want to kind of throw a bit more diversity into the mix here. So that way we wouldn't be just seeing, you know, Armory, Blacksmith, Mirrors, and Spam, and whatnot. Um, so... We're going to try and throw things up. We're going to try and get a little uh, interesting to see what these guys come up with for popper decks here. Uh, and normally I would be doing this intro with my co-caster, but considering that the co-casters for this one have been split up because, uh, well, the role has been taken on by two guys, uh, Beastly and Slash, both uh, taking some games here. Um, just because, of course, time zone differences and whatnot. So, yeah, with that being said, folks, we have match number one to get to. It is going to be Uj versus Dolphin. Of course, Uj backed up by Bolas and Mindlord. Um, Dolphin backed up by uh, Vicious Val and Helios. Uh, we'll see which team we, uh, we'll bleh, see which team wins, though. And uh, yeah, match number one, folks. Let's go ahead and jump into that right now. All right, folks, match number one now underway as we've got uh, Uj v. Dolphin should be good here. And, of course, we're already seeing the strategy from Uj underway here. Uh, a little bit of Shaman, a little bit of Ice. Uh, it should be probably a buff deck, I want to say. Ooh, Soldier, I like uh -oh. to see that here. Uh, BC, what are your thoughts here, uh, Uj, going into the blue-red side of things here? And just based on the um... way we're seeing his hand develop early on. Well, I think he chose blue red just for the fact that it has dark bender, and I think Dolphin chose red just for the fact that it has dark bender as well. Although maybe he's going for a little bit of um awakened synergy. But I think Uj went for the freeze um which should be pretty powerful in this matchup, I would imagine. Yeah, not a whole lot of ways to remove that freeze easily. Um, you know, things like Dragon's Fire are off the table in this format. You do have Bolt, you do have um, Flamestorm, but again, things that may not be able to kill the actual uh, freezing st structure or the freezing card itself. So, uh, we'll see if that impacts the game in any way here. We're going to see, though, Darkbender hit the board for Uj here. Uh, meanwhile, Dolphin developing his board a little bit here, not really fearing a uh, Dragon's Fire, because again, out of the format. Uh, and yeah, we're just going to see this Dark Bender now kind of be a little bit aggressive. We can interact with this now from the wizard, but I don't know if we're really going to do that. Meanwhile, setting up a White Knight here. Probably getting set up to take a lot of these buffs that are in the Hand, Flame, Shield, Cloak of Ice. Uh, that should be nasty when it does hit the board. Um, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see if that's going to be the case here. Uh, I'm curious how to see what Dolphin's main win con is. You mentioned Awaken in the red-purple I don't really know how viable that is, though, considering that you lost a lot of Awakening pieces uh, because of the format Dojo restriction. Not common? Dojo is a common, but there are big things like Headwood, Golem, Saurus. You know, some of the better Awakening targets are restricted by high rarity. So even though you are getting that draw off the Dojo, um, you're not getting any of the big payoffs from the archetypes, so that's why I didn't think it was an Awakening deck here. Now, Demon Hunter coming out, maybe a bit of first strike shenanigans from Dolphin, maybe some, uh, some speed cards out of Ninjas, which I want to assume, but, again, not too sure, as the Flame Shield now goes onto the White Knight. It'll become a little bit stronger now, a bit of a, more of a pain in the ass to deal with, unless we've got, like, Vanishing Strike, exactly, or Icon from Dolphin. And then, yeah, meanwhile, setting up a lumber puts, jack. Yeah, if Ush puts a cloak of ice on that uh, that white knight, things are going to go badly. 
Yeah, indeed. And uh, Dolphin kind of recognizing that, um, throwing out some emotes here. Oh, okay. Well, there's Blue Fire. Blue Fire will help clear off the White Knight. Fantastic stuff from him there. Uh, and then meanwhile, kind of taking a very defensive approach here this game. Anything that you want to kind of comment on, basically, about the way Dolphin's playing this? He seems very uh, laid back, allowing Uge to kind of come in, you know, as he pleases. Where where do you f think that he's going with that strategy? I think he's playing it relatively well. He did get a good for two, two for one trade there with the uh, with the first strike unit into the uh, the buff vampire. Um... Or the buff white knight, excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, but you can't... I mean, the issue is... he. I think he knows that he's playing against Freeze. Just because of the color. And if you rush your units in against Freeze... Well, they're going to get frozen. And you're not going to be able to get other units there to, to kind of back up. And, um, and get rid of those Freezes. So, it looks like he's just going to play it passively for now. Which I think, again, is the right call here. We can see a couple of... Well, I don't know if... Do you think he's baiting the Freezing Pillar with this play right now? We've got the Northlands Ranger moving in front of the castle here. The Darkbender and the Wizard up top, too. It leaves a good spot for the Lumberjack to plop a Freezing Pillar and just stall for a turn here. Um, the issue now is, does... Like, is there anything that gives Uge chain in his deck because otherwise it's really hard to follow up storm on storm uh, strike i think is the only on... chain enabler temple is locked yeah. at rare so again not in it the is... format it is going to be very very hard for Uge to capitalize on his freeze them because normally chain is the thing that capitalizes on freeze if you're being aggressive mm -hmm. so in his case since he can't do the chain and dolphin is playing passively um, I don't know if he's going to see all that much value out of, uh, his freeze. Now, in his case, he is getting, um, some decent value out of the range units with the freeze, but I think that's all we're going to be seeing today. Unless it's, like, demonic in the, uh, actually, no, again, that's already locked to that pick, I apologize. That is not in the format. Uh, ooh, ooh that's a big, oh, that's a big dragon. That's a spicy this little tag huge, play right this there. This is huge for yeah, eliminating the stone or one of the dark benders is now going to have to force this second dark bender to double back to deal with the stone drake. I mean, we can deal with it, uh, but the question is, how do you want to? Whether or not we want to put another freezing object down to stall for it, or just pop it with what we have on the board. And it seems like Dolphin's really starting to build up his field presence quite a bit here on this board. Um, and the way he's holding it back, I, Dolphin, I, not Dolphin, Beastly. <laughs> I think what we might be seeing is maybe Synchro Strike. Because, I mean, that is that is a common, and that is a global speed spell, which, I mean, like, the Ranger could charge in and hit face at that point here. The White Knight can do some clearing. The Wizards as well. Synchro Strike can do a lot, and it's very underrated because, again, there are just better options at higher rarities. But when you take those away from the format, you open up to ideas like this. So we'll see if that's going to be the case here. Ludicrous Strength going onto the Darkbender, going to pop the Stone Drake here. Shield Runner coming up to probably protect the Darkbender, although Shaman going to do a good job of that already with the Cloak of Ice here, freezing off the rest of the board, or most of the board. Half of the board, half of the board. There are yeah, six I units think Uja's idea to capitalize on the freeze was to use range units, um, but that's not working out so well for him because realistically he's just going down cards in card-to-card -card trades. Yeah, um, you can see the resource war isn't really a winnable object for Uj. I mean, there are so many big units not coming out on the board here, and while he has a 7-8 Darkbender, which is big... I mean, he has to freeze all these cards, you know, one at a time, and, you know, losing that freeze every time. This would be perfect if Ush had Chain, but unfortunately, that's that's just not a part of the format. And I think he may have taken that thinking into this format, where, like, freeze is good because you can capitalize on it so well. Um, but I don't think we're going to see that here. Perhaps here we're He's debating... He's trying to get the board locked. Oh, he's just going to swing castle. That's actually smart. All that's right. really smart. I mean, we're hoping that the Kunoichi gets frozen, I think, because uh, we don't know where that sucker is. Um, 
And okay, yeah, he did get it down at the bottom. The wizard can eliminate the freezing pillar, which now can open up maybe a bit. But a nine ten dark bender is not exactly the easiest thing to get rid of when a lot of your board is now frozen. Rouge has done the smart thing, which is basically saying deal ten or die, and he's only giving one square. Uh, that was a misplay by Dolphin. He should have used the um the Masuda over the top of the uh, the shield bear to get to that top square. Mm -hmm. Um, next to the uh, the dark bender. I think he now knows that it might be over. I mean, he can swing with the lumberjack to phase. I think Dolphin needs some kind of blocker to protect there. Uh, realistically, though, I don't know if he's going to deal the last bit of damage here. Blue fire is an option. Same with Witch Bolt. Those are both burn options that can deal the last four bits of damage. Um, but yeah, if he had a unit, the Masuda yeah, was a huge misplay. Just had... If Dolphin just had a 4 damage card, that was um, available. But as it is, I think Usha's strategy may have worked out with the uh, the buffing of his Dark Bender. I think he just wanted to go face with big range unit. Uh, okay, and then another Dark Bender. Board. Yeah, he's just going to pretty much stall out the board. I was uh, wondering if he was going to try and trade the Lumberjack into the Demon Hunter for perhaps an additional point of draw to see if he can get like the buff to close it out. But uh, I guess not. You can fear back away the most recent Dark Bender. We're gonna trade into the Demon Hunter. Yeah, battle he ready. It. <laughs> he he would have gotten it. <laughs> yep. Watch Dolphin swing this now. No, there's no way. There's just, you can't get to the base and deal twenty in um, the time Dolphin has. No. Uh, we do have the four eight, so we would have been able to clear it again if we just yeah, had that square that open. Turn, mm -hmm. If he did that last turn, I don't know if he drew the buff. Uh, this turn, but yeah. if he did have that and he used it last turn, he could have cleared the Dark Bender. Well, with that being said, though, of course, our first match for King of the Hill uh, concludes as Uj does move on to our round two. Uh, putting Dolphins seem in a bit of a rough position now as they must go, uh, you know, they have to pretty much win without him at this point. Uh, so we'll see what happens, of course, uh, in our next matchup here. Uh, I don't remember what that is. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and take you into that match right now. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. <laughs> King of the Hill. Match number two, folks, indeed. Match number two. Uh, we're going to jump into it. Not a bad opener uh, for Val. Unfortunately, he does have that big boy cannoneer in the hand. He's going to have to replace it here. Going to keep the Manticore, though, uh, which I think is a smart idea here. And uh, a bit of a weird one, to say the least, huh? Yeah, this is going to be a real interesting matchup. I mean, we could see all sorts of things coming out of Druids as they have all those nice supporting cards like Bestial Rage and the... the. I mean, double Phantom Strike is really surprising to see coming out of Val, but a very extremely, extremely strong opening coming from Bulos here as he's getting... I mean, I mean, the so entire... Much, yeah. So much play here on the board, and there's nothing that Val can do just because he's had a bad draw, and now the Manticore doesn't even trade well. It doesn't, and we're going to end up seeing the Dagger Storm come down, which is the, probably the expected play here, uh, just to kind of control a little bit. I'm going to see the Lumberjack come out here. This should... Ooh, Ramrush going... Okay, and the Lumberjack here. That's kind of okay, because now we can attempt to block with the Mana Core here, at least. Ooh, and the Lumberjack is a huge help here. It's going to trade well with that top Lumberjack here, so now Mana Core a little bit harder to kill. Uh, for Bolas, uh, and then yeah, we'll get the Mana Core up here. Uh, no point training because that bleed effect will kick in, and uh, not not too bad uh, control wise here, Slash, but it's still not in the best spot. Yeah, that fear is making the situation all the worst here for uh, Vicious Foul. He, I, I don't see necessarily oh. a clean way to come back into this game with the hand he has right now. In, in fact, I'd say this is probably GG right now potentially i mean we could do some rider shenanigans here but that really needs to land properly to really make it oh, it doesn't it goes to the wrong unit here he needed to hit something uh, and just now's having such bad draws he can't do anything about it he only has supporting cards in his hand yeah he's got the griffin which could do something but Still, like, at this, there's so much damage coming down the board here that I won't be surprised if Bolas just has the game clean up in the next turn. Stun grenade's a little too late, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Uh, that's the game, folks. And that's the game. <laughs> unfortunately, a quick one here as um, 
Bolas cleans it up in quite the efficient manner, but uh, yeah, not not the best look, unfortunately. But hey, Valt's team has one more competitor left in the tank here. We move on to game number three slash. A uh, quick one, but hopefully uh, we could see Helios bring forth a nice reverse sweep here um, in the next three games. <laughs> we, we can only hope, Red. We can only hope. All right, folks. And with that being said, let's go ahead and gain number three right now. All right, Slash, we're back for match number three here. Will it be a quick night for us uh, in the in the studio as uh, we approach a, what is potentially the final matchup here, but we're not sure. It's a very strong-looking <laughs> opening here from my lord. I oh, my God. Lumberjack, and that second Lumberjack with, with, with the Manfish, it, it's it's a very strong opening anytime you have Lumberjack. Oh, I and speaking of Lumberjack. Old. Oh, I think this is we have a game on our hands now, Red. Oh, we might, we might. I mean, I just noticed Helios's colors here, the same as Bolas in the last game. So, can we potentially be seeing a sort of mirror matchup from the other side of things here? Was uh, Helios the one to run the uh, the exact same list Bolas might be playing? <laughs> the, the concern you always run into in that situation is then what happens if somebody runs a counter to to your deck? All of a sudden, both of those decks are gone basically for free yeah and uh we're gonna see mine lord here decide to go a little bit heavier on the uh early game here putting out the manfish the lumberjack here helios you saw having to resort to a blue fireball to pop the mischievous imp here uh i'm not really a fan of the lumberjack to block here but i mean that's fine looks like we are gonna get a lumberjack trade going uh we might see i believe serpent which is the correct play here but he goes for horseman to get some early damage that is fine but i feel like a 2-7 is a bit of a bigger threat on an empty board i'm surprised he didn't trade the other way around and left his lumberjack alive it to, to me it would have seemed a bit better to to have that additional lumberjack just as a body on face because it's something you have to deal with but right the the uh i mean still an extremely strong position here for my lord certainly the case and um uh... Yeah, now we're going to see Helios setting up the Dark Bender here. That could potentially do some nice stuff here, but uh, again, we're going to see if Milo has an answer to that here. Ooh! Pulling out Colossus here, so more monster focus than we actually anticipated. Uh, we will see the Manfish trigger the Colossus movement here, so now this guy's going to get going on the board. Uh, and this is, again, much like last game, slash a lot of damage coming down pretty early with I, not much coming out of Helios to properly defend this. The, the thing with uh, Druids, though, is that with that Bestial Rage, you can get such nice, clean board clear-ups clear ups very quickly. I dislike that um, Horseman, though, because he could have, for all you know, would have hit the uh, Manfish and all of a sudden lost it for free, but not that is not the case here today. Uh, I dis... I... It for free. He yeah. loses it for free. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yep. Uh, not a huge fan of that trade here because, of course, you just saw we lost the horse without actually using its body here to make a better trade. Um, we can move the Dark Bender back to clean up the horseman, but it's still in, uh, it's still allowing uh, six, seven in damage actually with the Manfish explosion, pretty much guaranteed to stay on Castle here. Um, and yeah, it just continues to look bad here because now we can push Minotaur in for a potential game ender here. It's going to be... Uh, I'm not sure, certain about the Minotaur here. I was thinking possibly Scout and uh, Lumberjack just because you need so little damage to, to clean this up. Maybe, but I, we're I going for Lumberjack. Way, I, don't, I, I don't really see a way, though, to simply stop this push, though, that's going on. I think this is a, this is the game in the bag here for my lord unless Helios has some big play that we could not foresee. There's not many body blockers which are going to be too terribly great to, to spawn a lot of units in this pauper deck style of uh, King of the Hill here. Right. And uh, I, I mean, I'm not so sure we're seeing it or I can see it either. Uh, we're going to see the Dark Bender connect there. We're going to hit the Minotaur, which is surprising. We do have the Griffin. Okay, so this is going to help us block a little bit here, unless we draw fear or removal. Horseman. Oh, that my God. <laughs> Extremely clean by Mind Lord. Just strong forward push and just a couple of mistakes, which were just absolutely collapsed in uh, Helio's board. And then finally, ju just the, the 
extremely good curve winning my lord the game here yep well, and oh and with that being said slash i think this is probably one of the fastest king of the hills we've had here on the channel uh, in recent memory um i have to put together the matchup numbers but this might have been a quick one might have been a quick one but regardless folks uh we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do next so we'll <laughs> we'll uh throw it back to you whenever we can all right, and uh, yeah, we are back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, it was pretty chaotic after the game had ended. We didn't really know where to go because normally we'd assume some uh, games would go a little bit longer and some would kind of push us into a next round here. But considering that the team of Uj, Mindlord, and Bolas uh, clean swept the opposite side here I mean, we really don't have much else to say here those were the matches didn't get time for interviews either so again definitely a more scuffed king of the hill recording than i would have normally liked but again life happened you kind of just have to go through with it but regardless i hope you guys did enjoy this king of the hill video if you did be sure to let me know by leaving your thoughts down in the comment section below as well being sure to like share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't uh, haven't done so already uh, that's a big way you can show your support to the channel after all by clicking that subscribe button we are nearly at 1k yeah we are, we are nearly there less than 100 guys come on we gotta we gotta push we gotta push there uh <laughs> but yeah that's gonna do it for me for now guys um until next time stay gaming